Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Second Sunday. I am Jessica Alstrom, and I am the creator of the Quantum Revolution Tour and Transcendence International Consciousness Academy, Quantum Life, the Tika program here on Facebook, which is a global coaching forum, and um, the uh, writer of the book, Me, Myself, and I. And it's interesting, I just share you, just share with you my resume. And I think it's funny every time we hop online and we we kind of we kind of blur out our resumes. And it's it's always coming from this like subconscious place of here I am on a live video and this is why you should watch me. This is why you should follow me because I know what I'm talking about. But the truth is, is today I sit with you here at Second Sunday, which I do every single month on the second Sunday of the month. And I dive down deep into the collective consciousness for an energetic update. And it seems that every month when this day falls, I dive down into the deepest places of discomfort and pain within myself to go to the deeper places where a lot of us don't want to look in the collective mainstream vibrations. And so I thought today it would just be me and you sitting in my regular old classroom, just giving a chat about what is going down and what is going up and what is going sideways. Just me and you, and that's it. Nobody here, no big cameras, just, just us today chatting. And if you read the title of today's um, chat, it is The Basics of Warrior Training. I've been talking a lot about in my energetic updates about how important it is for us to turn and face pain, turn and face the darkness as light workers. And that's not been an easy thing for any of us to do. You know, we have been able to turn in the face of other people's darkness and other people's pain and with a bright light, give the best answers and the greatest advice we could. And for years, that's kept us somewhat comfortable. It's kept us moving in the right direction. It's given us a purpose you know, to suffer in silence and make sure that no one suffers around us. We have been really, really good at that. We have been professionals, we have been experts. And, you know, as we all move ahead, we have survived a very, very, very intense energetic year. Whether it was emotional, physical, chemical, or, or a total cataclysmic event in your reality this year. It doesn't really matter because it's all a metaphor. It's all a metaphor for who we are and what the hell we're all doing here. And I know we've asked ourselves that question a million times, and I know some, some of you guys are jumping online to join me, so welcome. We've asked ourselves that, that question a million times. What's the point of all of this? You hire me and you say, what's my purpose? You know, you, you beg me, tell me why I'm stuck, you know, and, and my answer is always, always the same. You're not stuck. We're not stuck. It is only the awareness that is within us that needs to shift. The idea of who we really are at the core center of ourselves versus who we want to be, who we strive to be, who we long to be, and settling into the place of the I am that just is. You know, I've been doing a lot of teaching in the classrooms about being able to differentiate between the different aspects of ourselves. You know, we are both mortal and immortal, housing in one dense body that has access to the higher dimensions through its own nervous system and brain. The heart is connected to every other being in the whole entire universe through its beating understanding of telepathy. And yet we sit here and question our moves or we dive into numbness and do nothing for months and months at a time. We finally get the courage to quit the job and we sit. We finally get a chance to leave that relationship and we dive right back into the process of self-abusing or choosing someone else to abuse us. And I think that we're all becoming more aware. If anything has been gifted to us this year, it has been the gift of awareness. It has been the gift of understanding a deeper self within. It is a deeper urge and call that's coming from a place we're beginning to understand. Even though our circumstances may not match the, the purpose that we are acting out on a daily basis, that is the call of our heart, we still have more of an understanding now than we ever, ever have. So what's this idea of warrior training? And what the heck is this chick talking about, right? 
Well, I believe that as a messenger, you know, I'm not a leader. I'm not a prophet. I'm a mirror. I, I am everyone and I am no one. I am you, you are me, and through the law of reflection, it is that wonderful gift of being able to see our own rejection and our own abandonment, our own projection and our own reflection in everything and everyone if we were only to look at what, what was actually happening versus what we were trying to resist or reject or deny. And we're all kind of being pushed through this tough love energy that we've been feeling this last five years to level up, to be who we say we want to be, to demonstrate, to speak our truth, to stand for ourselves. You know, we've always stood up for others, but this time it's about standing up for ourselves. So I wanted to take you through this aspect of warrior training that I'm actually technically in this moment putting myself through right now. Because for me, I am three different aspects. I am an ego mechanism that I created to survive in childhood that gave me the gift of understanding separation. It, it downloaded the frequency of judgment so that I may too commiserate with other humans and live in a family of dis, disease and rejection and separation and an absence of love. I created this for myself out of survival, which is the reason why we all have that beautiful thing called ego. Inside of me is my inner child, the one that is here to play and connect regardless of skin color or gender or age or economics. The one that wants to give and receive ideas and love and experiences and connections. And then there's this higher version of myself that you guys always hear me talk about that is the higher self. It is the I am. It is the isness. It is the state of being that needs not change to reside in perfection. It is the perfection point of who we are. It is the viewpoint within where nothing needs to change except a wonderful understanding that each experience is perfection. And within me, I have these three aspects. And as I am working to heal these three aspects of myself to integrate into one, then only then will I understand unity. Will I only understand why you behave the way you behave when I understand the reasons for my own? Will it only be then that I understand the purpose of war and the understanding of conflict and separation when I identify the war and separation within? So as we begin to close the gap and as the ascension contractions get more intense and closer together, we're all feeling this pressure this pressure to rise above more so than we ever have before. We're letting go on a global scale. We're letting go of emotions. We're letting go of obligations. We're letting go of false truths. We're letting go of connections that don't allow us to connect. We are letting go of this attachment that we have to not only the essence of what we want, but our own suffering. And so as I embark in this whole new journey, you know, going all around the world, putting on these quantum revolution tours, you know, what the hell is this, right? Why am I doing this? Well, most of the time when I do things that are coming from a deep place in my gut or my heart, I don't ask why. I just know that that's what I'm supposed to do. And it gives me this life force energy to be able to show up and spend 60, 70 hours a week at my craft and not get an ounce of exhaustion from that. It's, it's like this amazing force that moves through you when you say yes to your heart and your soul. It is when we question that that we find ourselves in suffering. And I have been dissecting suffering quite a bit in my own reality these last couple of months. And I came to a very important conclusion. Basically, what suffering is, is its desire that was never answered by you. It is desire that's never been answered for you. And desire is the first step of manifestation. So when we don't act in our desires and become the very essence of our desires and match the frequency of our desires and live as our desires and become our desires, then we begin to feel pain in desire. 
we feel begin to feel the separation of what who I am and what I can let myself have and what I'm allowed to have. The word no is the most poisonous word you have ever heard in your life. First, it was spoken to you from everyone you knew, and then you began to say it to yourself. You became the abuser that you were born out of. So whoever was neglecting or rejecting or abandoning you, you built that vibration into your hard drive and carried that through your reality, choosing different people to play that abuser until finally you realize that you have been your main abuser because you are the one who's choosing these relationships for yourself. You're the one who's choosing these, these choices, these decisions, these jobs, these friendships, these body problems. We understand we are in the third step, the third level of our ascension process, and it is the I am demonstration. I demonstrate. I demonstrate who I really am. And you know what? That's not all light. Some of this is the shadow side. Some of this is pain. Some of this is disguised. Some of this is still masked. Some of this is still unknown to us. And as we move into discovery of that, what is going to shock us, bring us back into the awareness is whatever it takes to do that. So if for you, if you're a stubborn soul like me and you despise authority, and you will do anything you can to do the opposite of what you're told, then you will find that you suffer in silence a lot of times and you reject your own truth. You reject your own understanding. But that's okay because that's what we are, is we are the art of duality. And we realize that there is no bad and there is no good and there is both sides needed to make this a beautiful expression of soul and body, immortal and mortal in one human being. We begin to use this energy to create. And what this, this warrior training is about, it's not the true definition of your third dimensional warrior where you're suiting up for, you know, going to protect and you're going to fight. That's not what I'm talking here. I'm talking more about the spiritual essence of what a true warrior is. And a true warrior is someone who is literally, their entire purpose is to take the idea of pain and turn it into love. It is to take pain itself and make it their purpose. So I have a question for you. Because you have this question for me a lot. What is my purpose? And your purpose is defined as whatever the reason that gets you out of bed. What gets you out of bed? What keeps you moving forward? What keeps you living here? What keeps you staying here? What keeps you going to that job? What keeps you staying in that relationship? What keeps you working on your craft? What keeps you numb? That is your purpose. And a lot of our purpose has, has been to basically survive our own lives. If I ask you, why do you go to that crappy job? You'll say, well, I have to pay my bills. So basically, our purpose in that moment is to survive our own existence, to survive our own reality. And when we understand that all we are doing is surviving, and that is your purpose, and you are really good at it, aren't you? You have been really good at that purpose. You have been a master of survival. You have been a master of figuring it out when there's no solutions. You have been a master of manifesting what you need just enough at the 12th hour. You're a master with the purpose of suffering. And on the other side of that is to master the art of thriving. But for us to really move into that other side of the potential, the quantum field of possibilities, and look through the viewpoint of thriving, we have to understand how powerful we are in surviving. And we have to take ownership of how amazing we are at that. And if we can be amazing at that, what it takes to resist the entire abundant universe from us, keeping it from us, then what would we do if we flipped that switch? But what is it going to take to flip that switch when most of your life has been governed by your very, very protector, the grand separation of yourself, 
your ego identification that the world is against you, not for you, that the world doesn't love you, that you're rejected here, you're not safe with your empathy. You're not safe in your power. You're not safe to speak your truth. You're not safe to live your truth. These are deep core, core beliefs that most of us, messengers, sensitive, light workers, empaths, have in our own vibrational alignment that we are projecting forth. And law of, a law of attraction is answering perfectly like it always does for us. So I decided to take myself through warrior training as I gear up for this world tour. And it was this time last month when I found myself in Thailand to, to be a part of an amazing ceremony in Phuket. And the ceremony was basically to celebrate the seven steps of manifestation, celebrate us as creators, celebrate the actual physical steps that it takes to embody the vibrational alignment of creation itself. So of course I was honored to be there with my team, 11 of us, of course. And as we showed up, we realized that our purpose was even bigger than we thought. We all ended up on the beach where we found ourselves needing to be of service. Now, I talked about this last second Sunday, so I won't go into exactly what we did or what the point of it was, but we all knew when we connected truly to the pain that we were experiencing what our purpose was. So warrior training is about connecting to the pain to find the purpose of it, to find the magic in it, to find the mystic you in the pain that you have created for yourself so that you could become the biggest and most amazing version of yourself. And as I sat on that beach and I felt the emotions of that, that devastating event of the 2004 tsunami, I knew that it was my job. If I can feel this, I need to heal this. And that is also my job with myself. If I can feel this, then I can heal this. And so that's what we did, 11 of us. We went to the, the beach not knowing what we were gonna do or how we were gonna do it. All we knew is that we needed to find a frequency of unconditional love. And then we needed to hold on to that frequency, frequency so we could be the channel that would clear the energy of that space. Now in this warrior training that I'm going through, that I've decided that I am going to in two years, for which I haven't done a workshop in two years, that I'm actually going to open this up as a workshop. And anybody that has is going to be joining us in the Quantum Revolution Tour will receive this workshop for free, okay? Because I think that if I'm going through it and I'm growing through it, then you might find some value in it as well. And everything I do in my life is just experiments. I don't know what the outcome is going to be. But I know that if I show up and I rise up, that in any case, I'm going to learn more about myself. And somehow me learning more about myself helps me be able to translate that for what's going on with you. So I'm pretty excited about this. So I thought I would take you through these steps and use these steps as my metaphor for today's chat. Just the two of us chatting about what it means to be a warrior, a warrior of love, a warrior of light, whatever, whatever sounds the best to you really doesn't matter because you've already survived. Now it's time for us to thrive, but we've got to make peace with those aspects of ourselves and find a deep level of unity that we haven't had before. We have to have a connection so deep with ourselves that nothing can break our state of being. No wave can crash into us and knock us down. No bad news, no break in any pattern. We're solid in who we are from the deepest place of knowing. And the separation that we created really early on in life is being healed through acceptance, through awareness, through understanding, through practice, and through communication. And it is this process of this integration of the selves that brings us into our strongest ways. You know, when we are weak with ourselves, then we really can't be all that we can be. 
And just like, you know, anybody that has been through a boot camp of any kind, my boot camp was childhood. Boot camp is there to basically undo the real you and program you with whatever program you need to be come in order to live that way. And we did it in childhood, and now we're going to be doing it again. But this time we're going to be doing it from our higher selves perspective and not through pain and duress and pressure, but through love, through acceptance, through understanding, but using all the tactical skills of any warrior that is here for any cause, because that's what it's going to take. This journey is not all soft and gooey. There's hard as edges. There are sharp edges. There is alternate universes and alternate agendas. There are people who appear light and loving. And when the mass drops, you see something completely different because as this world is illusion, it is both shadow and light. So the more you understand who you are, the more you will know the intention of everyone else. And therefore, with knowing your intention, your true purpose, you'll have this intuition and this connection that you've never had before with the, with the rest of the planet and the planet herself about what she's experiencing as well. You know, as Mother Earth goes through her transformation, she's basically giving birth to a new, a new reality, a new level of evolution, and she's had to do it through her own revolution. She's had to do it through a deep level of purging her own emotional body that to us appears like weather. And we are doing the same. We are following that micro of the macro. We are following in her footsteps. So as she grows and shifts and changes and explodes at times, we find ourselves doing that and needing to do that as well. And when we stop fearing the changes and we begin to flow with them, then we move out of being stuck in this riptide and we learn to surf. We understand and we are moving in one with the waves and we are confident and our bodies are strong and we're aware and we're agile. This is what I mean by warrior training. So I thought I would take you through the steps just to kind of plant the seeds for you of what you're gonna be asked to do this year on your own, whether you participate with us in the quantum revolution, or you do this on your own, or you just take these eight steps that I'm about to give you, and you plant that seed, and you watch, you watch your higher self put you through this training in your own way. Because we're all going here, regardless if we want to or not. We're first being asked, the first step of warrior training is awareness. Now, it's not just awareness of the I am or your spiritual practices or the books that you've read. To me, awareness is going into the, the dirtiest, darkest spaces of your own mind and turning on the light. And awareness is about observation, not judgment, which means you're turning on the light of the darkest spaces within you and you're standing there in full acceptance. This is the first step. The second step is courage, the courage to stand there, the courage to be with your pain, the courage to be with your past without judgment, without believing or identifying with it, but just feeling it because there is purpose in every ounce of pain that you have lived through, been through, or witnessed. There's purpose in it all, and most of the magic is in the shadow. Which means if you could stand there long enough with that light on, that would take an act of courage. It's about facing ourselves. It's about facing where, where our fears. It's about facing our challenges. It's about facing our emptiness. It's about facing our loneliness with courage. Third step is discipline. Now that is a bad word to us light workers because all of us are here to deny authority. We're here to break intentional rules. Otherwise, nothing would ever change. We are anarchists to the core. But this definition is a little bit different as it comes from the word disciple. And 
you're not here to be a disciple of me. You're not here to be a disciple of any teacher. You're here to be a disciple of the higher you, the higher self, the you that never lives in judgment, that loves you unconditionally and everyone else. This is your master teacher. And the you that you've been trained by this whole time has been circumstances and events, other people, situations, parents, school, religion, gurus. But in this level of discipline, we become the disciple of ourselves, which means that the, we become the student of ourselves and we begin to take notes and go through lessons that our higher self is preparing for us with open ears and a loud voice. So the next step is when it gets a little heavy, it gets a little serious, but we all know that it usually takes something like this for us to really start to move. And this is the step I like to call relentlessness. This is the step where there's no turning back. This is the step where there is no plan B. This is the step when you decide to become an intentional creator and you manifest all of your dreams. Because now by this point, you have been a student and a disciple of yourself, which means you are moving into the level of teacher. And as you move into teacher, you know, you're not reading from a book. You're just living your truth and your passion. And you are relentless to your hopes and your dreams and your cause and your ideas, which means that you become the essence of your intention. And you begin to move through all of those weaknesses and interesting fear personalities that we have developed over the time to cover up fear, right? Lack of motivation, lack of ideas, inability to make decisions, attachment and obligation, intentional suffering, exclusion, introvert, intervision, introversion, too much extroversion. These are all fear identities that we mask the ultimate fear of turning the light all the way on. Scary, right? But this is when we become relentless. The next one is interesting because as I sat with it, at first I judged this one a bit because when I identified with the classical definition, it seemed a bit odd. And this one, this next step is cunning. To become cunning. And the traditional definition of that is basically to win through deceit. But that's not actually what it means. To be cunning is to have a level of wisdom that understands each perspective of each game that is being played. It's like a keen sense of understanding. This is when you begin to identify when pe with people's wounding instead of their abrupt reaction towards you or their horrible projection at you. You begin from the sly space to understand the mechanism of this aspect of humanity. And through that aspect, you be able to weave and move through this physical experience as the worry you are, you are because at this point, there's no backing down and nobody knows this route better than you. You know why people do the things they do and what they actually do them for versus being fe the feeling of being attacked or judged. You immediately are so present in your physical body and in the purpose of within yourself. And you have identified your own pain so you understand other people's pain. And this allows you to be able to talk to them and speak to them and help them through their level of awareness, not yours. This is when the mastery begins to develop. And the next step is another bad word to us inner child, the inner child that I'm talking to right now, and that's the word patience. Ugh. Be patient. Oh, I had to learn patience this year. I learned so much patient, patience. But if you really understood how we create our reality, patience 
is in the, in the third dimension, it's an act of waiting. But in the higher realms, in the higher dimensions, patience actually means preparation. It means I am preparing. Feel the difference in that energy? I am preparing. I am preparation. There's no waiting. So what do we do when we're preparing? Right? We are actively doing everything we can to fill that space, to build the bridge, to build the ingredients, to build ourselves. So when you find yourself in patience and your energy drops down because like a child, now you have to wait. What your job actually is to do is to fill that void with the art of preparation. What am I getting ready for here? I'm having to go through a lot of patience. So what am I actually being prepared for? Feel the difference in that energy? Feel the difference in yourselves when you say that? And the next step is compassion. Because the one thing that you're going to learn at this point in your warrior training is how damn compassionate you are now towards yourself. Because you have gone through each of these steps and you are basically not breaking yourself down like in it in boot camp, but we are uncovering all of the layers and masks and pain and jail cells and limitations and rejections that you've built around you out of other people's gifts towards you and towards your own belief systems that has kept you small and safe. This is when you begin to understand why there are going to be people around you who still feel they need to keep themselves small and safe. And you're going to have a level of compassion like you've never had before. You're going to have an understanding that is unparalleled to anything that you could have even felt before because you are rendezvousing with true compassion of self. And then you're going to see yourself in everyone. And you're gonna realize, just like I said, that I am you and you are me. And you may be at a different step of your warrior training, but that is not something to be judged. That is something to be honored. That is something to be commended. And fortunately and fortunately, we are all going to go through this this year. This is us getting ready for our best life. This is us healing our planet and taking our power back and developing new skill sets from old skill sets. This is us bringing back old, new technologies and medicines. This is us rising above and having choice. This is us to do this in the most compassionate way we can. This is the art of being gentle. This is the art of being sweet. There is no harshness in this step. There is only flow. And through the compassion of identifying anything within your own craft that you're here to master, you understand that when you get to this space within yourself, this is where the flow really begins where you can take your hands off the wheel and you begin to navigate. You begin to go with the pull of your heart and your soul versus your logic and your mind. This is when there is no separation between any of us. There is only love, which is the last step. Understanding that love is not an emotion. Love is what you are. And when you are unable to express this, or receive this. This is when you suffer. But because it has been safe your whole entire world and you're observant of other people being unsafe in love, then this is usually where we shut ourselves down. But this, this last step of warrior training, is the true definition of unity. The true definition of love to me is acceptance. Acceptance without judgment. Acceptance without deciding whether something is good or bad, but loving it unconditionally either way. Because even in the darkest spaces of the universe, there is love. There is light. There is a call. There is a message. And our job as warriors or messengers or whatever you're calling yourself these days, our job is not to be afraid of the dark. 
our job was to fly, to be the flashlight to shine in there and let everyone know that it is just a matter of flipping a switch and the world lights up. It's just a matter of standing in our own truth and going through the process of ourselves to remember exactly who we are. So as I take myself through this, I'm conditioning myself like I never have before. I'm having to be present with areas of my mind that are not always joyful. I'm being asked to turn on the darkest points of myself and stand in a space of grace. And it's interesting because whenever I do Second Sunday, I always get emotional. And the reason why is because I'm asked to go into the deeper parts of the collective and to not just channel the white light worker collective or the messenger collective, but to dive down into the deepest parts of the collective and and feel the aspect of the call, feel the pain, feel the asking, feel the desire from those who are not quite ready to awaken. And so it always produces a huge amount of motion for me. And a lot of times I don't share this with you, but I'm also, um, I'm also a journeyer. So I do a lot of lucid traveling. And I love to go into different probabilities. I love to go into different possibilities because probabilities are basically just a huge amount of focused energy in one direction that produces a, po a possibility. Focus is consciousness. And whatever consciousness is focused at will become a probability or an outcome that could technically happen in our holographic universe. So I love to go see where different levels of consciousness are shining their focus at. And some of the places are not very fun to look at. Some of the probabilities and outcomes that we have um, donated our own beautiful conscious focus to are not, are not loving. And I was taken into a dream last night of what looked like a probability of the end, of the end of everything. And it was interesting because I asked myself, you know, why would I take myself here where this is such a far probability because the world is waking up. And as the world wakes up, we become more aware. And as we become more aware, we become creators. And as we become creators, we begin to demonstrate that. And as we begin to demonstrate that, we remember love. And as we remember love, we change this outcome. So why am I going here? And I realized that I'm about, you know, halfway through my warrior training and, you know, spending a lot of time in the shadowy spaces of the conditioning. It's very easy to get wrapped up in the everyday you know hours and hours of your life and what this particular probability showed me and asked me because i i asked myself i and i talked to myself a lot i said self why would you take me here this is horrible and myself said well ask yourself this ask yourself this question if this was actually what was happening how would you spend your next moment? How would you see your next moment? How would your perspective of your family change? How would you change? And it was, it was beyond a feeling that was imaginable because it was more intense than gratitude. It was awareness. Because, you know, a lot of us are going through the motions every day and, you know, we're hitting our head against the wall and we're doing good things and we're working on our craft and everything is moving along. But it was an interesting perspective because I love to evaluate different perspectives to move myself into different mindful states. And sometimes in order to get the most light, you got to go into the darkest spaces. And that's what I did for myself. And I realized that what if I treated every moment like it was the last? Would I be in judgment of what my kid didn't do or did do? Would I be in judgment 
of what I did 15 years ago? Or would I be grateful for this moment? And so I've actually included a process that is inherently around this idea into my workshop because this takes us to a whole nother level of understanding what we have available to us and what we could actually feel in this moment if we allowed ourselves. We could feel everything if we chose to, but a lot of us will say, I'll feel that later. I'll feel that tomorrow. I'll feel that when I get my paycheck. But feeling is actually why you came, to taste, to touch, to use your senses, to experience the act of love, the connection of love instead of just being love, to slow ourselves down to a vibrational state where we could survive a human body and then become the essence through time and space of practicing the art of love through touch and smell and taste and feel and experiments and experiences. That's why we came. But again, that true definition of suffering is the unanswered desire inside of you. And I know that our first maybe half of our lifetime was spent repeating cycles that were, that were created in our first seven years. And I understand how those patterns work because I lived through them. I made choices coherently from a very uncoherent space within me. I followed my highest joy into my deepest pains over and over and over again. But that's what it took. That's what it takes me. That's what it takes some of you to hit these walls over and over and over and over again until we say, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for the real life I came for. Not someone else's program that they set me up in. Which means you're not here to live out your old genetic structure, you're actually here to break patterns in it and accelerate with it. You're not here to play out the stories of your childhood or your family's dysfunction. You're here to break those patterns and turn all of those patterns back into love and appreciation. You're here to speak the truth for those who don't have a voice. You're here to shine light on the dark. You're here to invent things that we'll need in order to create unity and a world that thrives. You're here to remember who you are. You're here to share all of that. So whether your purpose right now is just to wake up and survive your day, I want you to sit and accept that and, and really tell yourself you're doing a really great job. I'm doing a really great job surviving the life that I've created because I woke up today. And I know that a lot of you are at a crossroads like I mentioned in my last transmission and how right now more than ever you have choice. It is the only thing you technically own. It is the only thing that you have access to all the time. And sometimes all the time, it's the only thing you need. So even in the darkest jail cells that you could create for yourself in your mind and then therefore metaphorically translate into your physical reality and create the jail cell of your life, you can go inside there and make a different choice. You have that ability. You have that opportunity. You can see potential and limitation. You can see love in judgment. You can see yourself in someone else. And that's what awareness is. And if you can hear my voice right now, and I don't sound like this, wah, 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 then we maybe possibly could be on the same vibration. So <clears throat> I just wanted to invite you all to really sit with yourself at the end of this year. And instead of looking at how far you have to go, really sit in a space of gratitude of how far you've come. You know, you've made it through the darkest spaces. You really have. Now it is your choice to keep continuing to create this for yourself, or you can just decide, I'm done, and make a different choice. But then, just like the universe always says, prove it. 
Prove to me through your actions, through your awarenesses, through your communication, through your habits and your behaviors and your daily routine, prove to me your, your new choice. Prove to me, which is you, you are the universe, you inverse the story of your life, who and what you are. And if there's never been a better time than now to turn your light all the way on, that time is now. Because the earth is gonna go through many, many changes. And she's experiencing all kinds of growth through what looks like chaos and destruction. And through chaos and destruction, there's going to be, just like any war or any battle, there's going to be casualties. But casualties are never about death. It's about transformation. Because there's gonna be a part of you when you go through this warrior training that suffers a great casualty and the great transcendence of the integration of our own identification of our ego self into the higher self where we become the warrior. Because understanding that your ego is really a powerful warrior within you. Look at what it's done to keep you safe. Look at what it's done to keep you small and invisible. Look at what it's done to surround you with opportunities to break through. So if you actually channeled that power in with your higher self, you would be a force of nature. This is what we mean when we talk about DNA activation. It is when the me, myself, and I, the mind, body, and soul unify and become one, and that is what activates the kundalini. That is what activates the DNA. That is when all of the information returns to you because 99% of what I teach you guys, I have never, ever studied, ever. I have never picked up a book and learned anything that I teach. Everything that I'm teaching has come from my connection to myself and my remembering and understanding that I am not this body, that I am the universe. And if I am the universe, then I have access to information beyond this time and space, beyond my own memories, beyond what is stored in my biological genetics. And my only job is to be able to access that through awareness. And when we are aware and we are complete, then there is nothing there is no limitations that stand in the way of anything that you want to be or create or have, which means that age and economics, these are choices. And when we become unified with ourselves, we become that superhero that I'm always talking about. And I wouldn't say that I'm there, but I'm definitely in training. And I definitely know enough to be able to shine the flashlight for all of you. So thank you for letting me and be here like I always do. Um, I'm not gonna do any question and answers today because I believe that this was just you and me sitting alone in the dark, on the edge, on the cliff, together. And sometimes, you know what? That's all you need for yourself. Sometimes it's just sitting alone with yourself in the dark and saying, I'm here. I'm not leaving you. And being with yourself, this is where all the magic is. And I'm not gonna apologize for my emotions because that's what I'm gonna do. And that's who I need to be right now. So I do want to talk a little bit about the tour because that is my job, to talk about what it is that I'm creating, to bring it into life. And we want to create an atmosphere, an environment, and opportunities for you all to be able to attend. And I know that some of you are halfway across the world, and that's why I've decided to put this warrior training into a workshop. And so anybody who um, can't get to the quantum revolution tour itself, we'll still be able to attend the workshop. It's going to be eight weeks. It's going to start um, the first week of January and more details will come. But right now what I wanted to do is let you all know that anyone who has actually purchased a ticket um, who is coming 
is is going to receive this workshop, which is honestly, it's a documentary and it's a workshop of of this concept. And if any of you guys have done the Becoming the Real You workshop that I did two years ago, that was the greatest transformation of my life. And my life literally went from suffering to thriving, um, basically becoming accountable to my higher self and showing up every day as her. And now this is this is a step forward in the in the next direction of our own evolution of us really standing and feeling safe, even maybe in the dark, but knowing that we're the light. So we have a giveaway that we decided to do, and that is for um, that we've We've uh, already, my team's already been putting links in the messenger here in the, um, in the queue about how to do it. And you basically just click on the link um, in the title right here and it's an enter a win. And it's basically about sharing, um, sharing videos, sharing this video, joining our YouTube channel, uh, you know, helping other people get to the tour, um, getting yourself to the tour. And we will give away a ticket, I believe it's next week. Um, at 11 11 a.m. if I'm not misunderstood and also we have created some payment plans so that you guys can um, set your intention and start flowing energy towards your own investment uh, because you are all welcome to be there and um, um, I believe that's that's all I have as far as the tour um, and I will be posting more information about this new workshop that I've just downloaded uh, within myself and it will be eight weeks. I know that um, and it's going to be um, Pretty awesome. That's all I'm going to say about that. So I'll give you guys some more information when I, I um, Can actually give you an outline of what's to be so thank you guys so much for sitting here with me today and um, And I just wanted to tell all of my students how much I love and value them who for going on this journey with me all around the world, here we are in this little computer looking at each other, you know, halfway across the world, and I see you and I believe in you, and, and this is our time. This is why we came. You know, this is, this is the show we've all been waiting for. So thank you guys, and I will see you next week for our regular classes. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here and participating in our conversation. Love you.